The next item of business is a motion to affirm a statutory rule. I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. That the rates, regional rates order Northern Ireland 2020 be affirmed. And I call on the Finance Minister to formally move the motion. Can Corla, just before I, I, I move the rates order, can I join with uh, others in expressing my sadness at the, to learn of the death of John Dallet? And uh, I have worked for him for many, many years, worked with him for many years in this house, and I want to express my condolences uh, to his family and friends and to his party colleagues at this very sad time. Uh, can Corla, I'll ask Corla, I beg to move the order. <coughs> Thank you, Minister. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate, and I call the Minister to open the debate on the motion. This order is brought, about, brought forward annually, and it stems from the Executive's budget for the 2020-21 year, which was originally brought to the Assembly on the 31st of March 2020. This order has been overshadowed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In response to this crisis, I introduced a three-month holiday for all businesses. In England, only certain businesses were given rates relief. Had I followed that scheme, which some members have called for, rates would now be paid on 60 per cent of business properties. My department will shortly bring to the executive an extension to this rates relief scheme targeted at the hardest hit businesses. That, however, is separate from the order in front of us today. This order is about laying the ground for economic recovery in the longer term. It responds to a key concern of business for many years, the relatively high level of business rates. In fact, this order delivers an 18 per cent reduction in the non-domestic regional rate. I will now turn to the detail of the order and its purpose. The regional rate supplements the Executive's block grant. It helps fund expenditure on health, roads, schools, infrastructure and other essential public services. To underline the significance of the rating system, last year over $1.3 billion was collected in rates, regional and district, domestic and non-domestic. Taken together, the domestic and non-domestic regional rates set by this order equate to a headline revenue figure in the region of $684 million at the time of the budget. The legislation before you today for approval is the outworking of that important budget decision. In terms of the breakdown, the regional rate represents just over half of a typical rate bill the other half be made up of the district rates set independently by local councils. District rates set for 2020-21 have been high in some councils as a result of their financial difficulties. Today's order fixes two separate regional rates in the pound figures uh, for 2020-21, one for households and one for businesses. The new rate in the pound figure freezes the domestic regional rate for the 2020-21 rating year for households. In other words, no increase on last year's domestic regional rate poundage. Our household rates charges are relatively low here, but this freeze is important given the financial pressure on households at this time. On the non-domestic side, the over 6p cut to last year's poundage represents a very significant 18 per cent reduction in the regional rate. These together will help both household and commercial budgets as we emerge from the initial wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. I will close these opening remarks by addressing the technical matters concerned in the order. Its main purpose is to give effect to the poundage decisions already made during the budget process by specifying the regional rate poundages for 2020-21. Article 1 sets out the title of the order and gives the operational date as the day after it is affirmed by the Assembly. Article 2 provides that the order will apply for the 2020-21 rating year through to 31 March 2021. Article 3 specifies 27.9 pence in the pound as the commercial regional poundage and 0.4574 pence in the pound as the domestic regional rate poundage. I look forward to hearing members' comments and I commend the order to the Assembly. I now call the Chair of the Finance Committee, Steve Aiken. Uh, thank you very much, and me, Mr Deputy Speaker. And may I, as Leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, pass on our condolences to John's family and also to all his friends. And he's been a, he will be a very much missed member of this Assembly, and we wish his family all the best in these trying and difficult circumstances. Uh, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, as been outlined by the Minister, the purpose of the proposed statutory rule is to set the amount of the domestic and non-domestic regional rates for the year ending 31 March 2021. 
The order stipulates the regional rate for domestic and non-domestic property expressed in terms of pence per pound that will apply for the 2021 rating year. The pounding laid out in the proposed rule will reflect the Executive's budget for both domestic and non-domestic purposes. The policy proposals contained in the statutory rule were considered by the Committee at its meeting on 5 February 2020. The Committee had no issues to raise in respect of these policy proposals at that time. The Committee formally considered the statutory rule at its meeting on of April 2020, along with the accompanying report from the Examiner of Statutory Rules, who had no points to raise in the technical scrutiny of this rule. Much has changed since the Committee's initial consideration of the outlined policy proposals, but it is necessary, and I really emphasise it is necessary, to enable the Department to issue rate bills to rate, to rate payers. Naturally, any measures taken by the Executive provide financial, financial support to rate payers during the current crisis will draw on the resources received as part of the COVID-19 response. Whilst I'm mindful that the next item of business is on the budget, I think it is important to recognise that the collection of rates provides vital funding for the delivery of our public services. However, with that being said, I suspect that every member here has heard the concerns, particularly from the business sector, about the burden that non-domestic rates has on day-to-day -day cash flow. The Minister has previously outlined his intention to review the wider rating system. The Committee will indeed be keen to consider any policy proposals and will work constructively with the Department early in this process. The Committee agreed to recommend that Statutory Rule 2020-59, the rates, Regional Rates Order in Northern Ireland 2020, be affirmed by the Assembly. We therefore, Mr Deputy Speaker, support the motion. Thank you. I call Sean Lynch. Uh, and I welcome the Minister's statement. We will have further discussion, as the Chair said, in matters relating to the issue afterwards in the Budget. However, I want to welcome this order as an important element in the much wider programme, which the Executive will need to put in place as we move through these immediate health and economic trauma of the COVID-19. Whilst responding to events as they unfold, we in this Assembly must begin planning for the long-term economic recovery. This order addresses the issue of high business rates, which I am sure, as the member said, has been raised with most, most of us, particularly by business people, and it delivers an 18 per cent reduction in the non-domestic rate. The order also freezes the domestic regional rate for the next year for struggling households during this difficult period. There will be no increase on last year's domestic uh, regional rate. Therefore, I welcome the order. Uh, I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, um, Mr Deputy Speaker. And, um, first of all, I'd like to thank other members for, um, on behalf of the SDLP for their remarks and their condolences on the passing of John Dallet, MLA. In some ways, it's ironic that I'm the first person from our party to um, talk about John's legacy and our sadness at his passing, given my time serving with him this chamber was um, fairly brief. But in that brief time, I think like everyone in this chamber, I experienced his extraordinary integrity, his courage, his passion for the people of East Derry, and his commitment to inclusive politics in this place. He's one of the, he was one of the few people who um, was, had served in the original um, Northern Ireland Assembly elected in 1998, along with yourself, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I think people who have served with him through that time know the, 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 the size of his character, the size of his heart, and it's an immensely sad time um, for his family and for all those who knew and worked with him, and I hope we will have uh, some more time to reflect on his legacy in this chamber. Um, on the issue of the regional rates order, um, as a member of the Finance Committee, as the Chair and Sean Lynch, a fellow member, have said, we discussed uh, the rates order in our committee and, and, um, and approve its passing uh, today. I, I simply wanted to make the point, and I'll make the point again in my um, budget remarks, that in a sense the, the, the change times that we're all living in following um, uh, the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis really mean we have to look almost from first principles at how we do fiscal policy in this place. Uh, as the Minister said and as the Chair of the Finance Committee said, um, regional rates, non-domestic and domestic, are really the very, the, one of the only revenue tools the devolved institutions here have. 
but take a step back. The people on whom that burden falls greatest are small businesses in Northern Ireland, particularly small retail and hospitality. And who are the sectors of the economy that are hardest hit by the necessary steps we've had to take because of COVID-19? It's hospitality and it's small retail. That can't be right. We need to be able to have stable and reliable revenue sources in addition to the block grant. Uh, but we also need to be able to recover our economy. Um, this order was processed, or you know, it, it was born, as it were, before um, the COVID-19 crisis and everything that came with it. That's changed things entirely. It's changed the entire, probably, assumptions on which uh, this tax is based. We don't know what the commercial property sector will look like in the medium to long term. So I would just make the point, while in supporting the principle of the order, um, and there is no alternative, obviously, to support the principle of this order to allow the, the department and LPS to continue their business for this year, I would just say, do you give away briefly? Uh, I haven't indicated that I wish to speak in this debate, but as one of the members who entered this assembly in 1998 with John Dallet, and it's appropriate that he is speaking on this occasion, I want to pay tribute to John. John and I sat in many committees together in this assembly including his favourite, the Public Accounts Committee. He was a scourge of government overspending. Uh, he made an enormous contribution to this House over 22 years. He will be missed greatly as one of the very, very few that are still here, including myself, who arrived in 1998. Many of us would like to be uh, in Korean or Kilray to pay our respects. We won't have that opportunity, which I think is very, very sad. I certainly would have been there had I been allowed to do so. This is the point of order, or this intervention is entirely not in order, but I'm glad he's given me the opportunity to pay tribute to someone who I regarded as a great friend. Well, I'm, I'm glad uh, the member intervened, and I'm glad that I um, gave way. I think I'll conclude my own remarks at that and just defer to what the member has just said. I think it's, a, it's an extremely sad time for everyone here who, who values uh, inclusive politics and, and, and making this place uh, work. Mr Deputy Speaker, thank you very much. I call Andrew Muir. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I'd like to join with others in expressing my condolences on behalf of the party um, to the family and friends of John Dallet. I've only been here a short period of time, but we managed to have a, a conversation outside um, a number of months ago. And it was around um, his real dogged determination to ensure justice for um, uh, Inger Maria Hauser, who was murdered in 1988. Um, he, he fought that very, very hard, and I really think all of us in this chamber think that maybe the best legacy to John would be to ensure that the perpetrators of that are brought to justice around that. Um, and our, our thoughts are um, obviously, of course, with uh, John's family at this time. Um, in relation to the order, um, as a new boy here, uh, I looked through the last time the Assembly debated um, a rates order and what the protocol was in terms of contributions. Uh, the debate was on the 22nd of February 2016, and it lasted less than 15 minutes, but it was at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, the situation we face, however, today in 2020 is perhaps very different and perhaps meriting a bit more debate due to the circumstances we find ourselves in, with the affirmation of the order occurring now in May as opposed to back in February and the future ahead so uncertain. At the outset, I should declare that I was previously a member of Ards and North Down Borough Council. Um, I welcome the decision to cut the regional non-domestic rate by 4p, delivering an overall reduction of 18 per cent and alleviating somewhat the impact of Reval 2020, which had hit some sectors very hard, especially hospitality and hotels. Business rates, as the Minister has outlined, historically in Northern Ireland have been much higher than in Great Britain, with papers leading to the talks to, uh, that led to a uh, new decade new approach detailing this as a significant issue of concern for businesses and options for action which were set out, but at that time were not felt to be feasible. I am therefore pleased to see action on the issue by the making of this order and hope that this can be sustained in the future to ensure that the rates burden is fairly shared. Rates in Northern Ireland, as members are aware, are made up of both the reg regional and the district rate, providing the main source of income for our 11 local councils. In the current economic circumstances, a serious and almost certain risk now exists that the revenue forecast by district councils when striking the rates set in February will be much lower than anticipated. Whether derived via the district rate or provision of services such as leisure, planning, tourism and more, 
We therefore make uh, this order in the knowledge that the levels set do not secure the financial future of our councils. Arrears likely to arise for both domestic and non-domestic rates or the downturn in the estimated penny product for non-domestic property base are storing up a crisis for local government and making double-digit rises across Northern Ireland in the next financial year almost certain if assistance is not provided centrally. The delay in dispatch of bills will help somewhat to reduce the level of arrears, but but they will still end up being higher than before. It is therefore of paramount importance that the Department of Finance, working in conjunction with the Department of Communities, provides the financial assistance necessary to ensure our councils can continue, do not become insolvent and are uh, uh, not forced to implement swinging cuts and massive rates hikes next year to recoup the unanticipated costs arising as a result of COVID-19. To witness the collapse of one form of local government in Northern Ireland, which has continued through thick and thin, would be a tragic mistake, overlooking the valuable role played in delivering key services such as waste collection, burial, planning, leisure, economic development, alongside local civic representation. History will judge whether the decision to offer full rates relief for all businesses for the first three months of this financial year was the right decision in terms of the use of public funds. But in the uh, circumstances, the executive found itself uh, needing to take a quick and urgent decision to provide immediate support. It was the right decision at the time. The decision in terms of whether to extend the rates relief beyond the end of June does now, now need to be taken. Uh, with, uh, in the context of the ability to review the effectiveness of the blanket relief and the understanding of sectors most in need of further assistance. I would urge the Minister to consider targeted relief extension, taking into account those businesses who will remain under lockdown restrictions and struggle to come back as soon as others, such as, for example, retail, aviation, plus the hospitality, leisure and tourism industries. Lastly, in conclusion, LPS conducted a non-domestic rate review in 2019, with the consultation closing on the 11th of November 2019. In the challenging circumstances we now find ourselves, it is of even more importance that the recommendations arising from this review are brought forward, evaluated by an independent panel and published for consideration. The new economic circumstances we now find ourselves in require more than ever a fit-for-purpose business rating system, not focused purely upon bricks and mortar, which ensures that businesses not only survive but actually thrive. Alliance will vote for this order, but request that clarity is given by the Minister on the issues raised, whether in relation to securing a sustainable financial future for local government, extension of the non-domestic rates relief, and the status of the non-domestic rate review. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I call Pat Cackney. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and uh, thank you, Minister, for uh, coming here today. And thank everyone for the kind words to John. Um, I seen John just last week. I, I was talking with him, went out to see him. I find I had to go out to see him simply that I was put on to a committee that John was on, and when I went to visit him, John wasn't well. But he still had that fire in him. Him and I were trying to do a trip to Munich. I have a daughter who lives in Dachau, and we were going to try to go over in order to follow on what you brought up of uh, the terrible tragedy of young uh, that, uh, that murder which happened with him. John was up for it. He was up for the trip, and he still wanted to go. And on the day that we were there, it was the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Dachau, which was the first concentration camp. Uh, which, this was in Germany, but it was the very first one, in fact, the model where the rest of them went out, uh, that, that, that were brought out on that. And I was able to try and talk to him. And as I say, John, he led up. I, I, I personally will miss John. And I, I know it will be a time, Mr Speaker, when we come and we, 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 we will pay, this House will pay to it. But I genuinely miss him. And he, for me, he was a good man. I knew him long before I ever came into politics. I knew him from the bar. But look, that, that's neither here nor there now either. Uh, Minister, um, well, yes, I, I rise with everyone, uh, with so many speakers so far, and reluctantly, I, we have to, I have to find that we have no other option but to support this as it is going through. I see the small reductions that are going in, but I have to say uh, to this House that 
I mean, a lot of these small businesses, like I, I'm going to say it now, anyhow, my sister rang me last night that owns a very busy house. They have one pub in the centre of Belfast. Uh, they have no money. They have used up whatever savings they have on the rates. Uh, the three months was welcome for that, but they're trying to come out of this now. And there is no way that they can find that they will, will be able to sustain their business if they have to find this lockdown goes on much further. And I can tell you there is no way that they will find the resources if they have to try and operate a business by distancing within a public house, because it won't be possible. But, as I said, I stand here to try to say that the review that has been put in there, and I believe that it would be a much fairer way to try and get away from the bricks and mortar, or bricks and mortar, and to look probably at that in turnover. But these are for the days that have to come ahead, and we will be able to debate this. Uh, issues outside of this when this budget debate does come in, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. So I stand here today and I heard to say that I also have reservations and reluctantly I will be supporting this. I now call on the Minister for Finance, Conor Murphy, to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Uh, and I thank you to all the, the members who have contributed to the debate. Uh, as I say that today's 2020 regional rates order gives effect to decisions made as part of the Executive's 2020-21 budget. The Executive is aimed to strike a balance between the needs of ratepayers during what will be a challenging and long-term economic environment and ensuring that public finances are sufficient to cover the priorities we have set ourselves. Uh, just turning to some of the points uh, that have been raised in the debate, uh, I know uh, people have expressed support for the order, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, the, the issue that Matthew Toole raised in relation to revenue raising, we've discussed on many uh, occasions that I've spoken in this chamber, and, and he will be aware that I am committed uh, to looking at the fiscal levers uh, available to us, and I think that work is possibly even more important in the time ahead, given the circumstances we currently face. Uh, in relation to Council finances, as Andrew Moore has raised, of course we will continue to engage with councils uh, and, and try to ensure uh, that they have the necessary resources. There is no question of local government going under or going out of business. Uh, councils, like all other public departments, will find that certain money they had budgeted to spend in this quarter won't be spent now. And I, I know from uh, uh, experience of talking to some of the councils that they are already looking to see where they can find savings, as well uh, as recognising that they have reduced income in terms of the normal services they provide. But there will be savings from contributions they would have made to uh, various items, particularly over the summer months, uh, that probably will not now go ahead. So I, I know that we will continue uh, to look at that and to look at the finances available to council through the, the rates uh, discussions with them. Uh, and, and of course, I get the, the points that uh, Mr. Catney has raised in relation to the ongoing struggle uh, with small businesses, and that's not part of this. Of course, this does contribute in terms of the reduction of the non-domestic rate over the, the, the period of the year and into the, into the future uh, in relation to uh, businesses. But obviously, the executive wants to look at uh, what other interventions that we can make, and there have been, I think, over a half a billion pounds worth of interventions in trying to support businesses to date. Uh, we will continue to understand that the economy is going to struggle uh, in the time ahead, and we will do what we can to do that. Uh, so, uh, last concord, in conclusion, I trust the members will show the necessary support uh, for the order. I believe the strategic approach towards the domestic regional rate, in particular the non-domestic regional rate, will be welcomed by households and businesses alike. In closing, I would like to thank the committee chair and the committee, as well as the committee staff, for their work on the order, both in terms of reviewing the con reviewing concept at its 5th of February meeting and the substance at its 22nd of April meeting. The timing of the Executive's return, the late Westminster budget and the issues facing us all as a result of COVID-19 have been real, a real challenge, and I welcome, therefore, the Committee's work to assist the Department in its scrutiny and look forward to working with them in hopefully a more typical environment in the months ahead as normality begins to return. Uh, last concord, I commend the order to the Assembly and would ask the members to affirm the order. Before we proceed to the question, I would remind members that this motion requires cross-community support. The question is that the rates, regional rates order Northern Ireland 2020 be affirmed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary no. As I am hearing ayes from all sides of the House and there are no dissenting voices, I am satisfied that the necessary cross-community support has been demonstrated. The motion is agreed. The motion is agreed. 
The next item of business is a motion on the budget 2021. Clerk, please read the motion. <laughs> 